everyone and welcome back to another video. So this is now the third video in our Power BI series and we're going to continue on from where we left off in the last video. So if you haven't seen the last previous videos then you can find the link to the playlist below this video. Um, so yeah you can go check those out if you haven't seen them and you need to get started with installing the application um, else we'll continue this video from where we left off. So we've got our data set here. Um, so this is now putting together our three data tables from our base Excel file. But as you can see, it's kind of a bit boring information really. It gives us the name and it gives us the city, but it's not really giving us in any in meaning, info, meaning information. So you can see all it does is gives us everything by name. If we wanted to keep this table, what we wanted to to summarize by the city level, all we need to do is remove name from our data table and you can see it gives us a summary um, basically by city. So what we could do if we wanted is leave this table here and let's just do a copy. So let's go control C, click off our table, control V. So copy and paste works in Power BI as it does with any other um, uh, Microsoft application. I could even think who makes it then. And let's say we've got our city over here in this table. So we can see the city and the total sales and the total units. But in this one, we want to be able to give it at the individual level. So what we could do here is just bring our employee name in, but remove city. So all I did here is drag employee name into the new table. I'm going to delete city, like so. And let's just make this one a bit bigger. And let's just drag it up as well, just so we can not just feel the page, why not? And let's just do the same with our city table as well. And as you can see, as I'm navigating around, it, it's really useful because it gives us these red dotted lines. And what those are is it just allows us to make sure that the two tables are either aligned at the top aligned perfectly in the center, as you can see if I hop down here, or aligned perfectly at the bottom as well. So that's just another great feature available to us just to make sure that everything is aligned if you're particularly fussy about making sure everything is perfect. Um, but having said that, we want people to be able to see and work with this file, so we do want it to be as perfect as possible. So now that we've got the two tables, we've got the flexibility. We can now see the summary at the city level, and we can also see the summary at the individual level. So let's say we wanted to look at Brighton. All we need to do is select Brighton. And what will happen is our second table will now automatically be filtered so that we only see the individuals and the sales available in Brighton. And we can see that total sales in Brighton was uh, 24,400. And if we then look in our uh, people table, so by individual, we can also see that again, yet. Yeah, we can validate that yes, this is just Brighton sales because our total is 24,400 and there was a total of 133 units sold in Brighton. So this is another really easy way to obviously manipulate our data or not manipulate, but break it down so we have a better understanding of what is happening uh, and where the sales are coming from. Again, I keep going back to examples of Excel, but this is a real benefit of Power BI. If we wanted to have both two sets of data and the flexibility for it to, to dynamically update for us. You can obviously probably already know by now that would be a bit of a, should we say, a bit of a pain to have it produce and do exactly that functionality as easy and simple as it is doing here. So let's just move our tables down here because as they're all good, they're working fine. So I'm just going to move that one there and let's just move this person one down as well. So what we're going to do is now, as the, as the title of the video gives, is we're going to bring in our very first chart. So what we'll do is we'll just use a chart to summarize the sales per city, rather, or we'll keep it in the table, but just as an addition to that. It's nice to see it in an actual visual. So when it comes to using any of our visualizations, all we simply need to do is just decide what one we wish to use and select that chart. So I'm just going to go for a stacked column chart. And you see it's added in there. And exactly the same way we populated our table, you can see that we've got now the ability to drag our relevant fields into our, um, into our visualization. The only thing we need to do is just be clear on obviously where we're putting our information. So the first thing we want to do is populate our axis. So this is the value that's obviously going to be along the base and measure our time timeline for each, um, each of our sales. So you could even drag date in here. But for us, we're going to simply just bring the city into the axis. So we can literally just see, okay, for each city, there'll be a particular, there'll be a specific bar chart for each city and then the total sales for that city. So in order to do that, we just need to go into locations and drag city into our axis. And you can see it's populated city at the top here, so we know information has been um, captured. 
And then all we want to do is go into total sales and drag total sales into our values. And there we go. As simple as that, we have now got total sales by city available in our visualization. So as you can see at the moment, by default, it just sorts all the data by you know the largest to the smallest. So we can see that London is the largest there with um, 50 or just short of 60,000. If you don't want to have it filtered or demonstrated or sorted, that's what I'm looking for, in this manner, all you need to do is, having selected the graph, if you click the three dots on the left here, or the right, sorry, you can see you could either have it, at the moment it's selected by sort descending, you can have it sort ascending, so obviously it goes smallest to largest, or my personal preference, or well again, it depends what you're um, actually trying to filter on, you can change it so rather than be sorted by sales, you can have it by city, and then by that way, you can see we've now got it in alphabetical order, what's quite nice on the eye to look at. So it goes from Brighton through to Perth, and you can see each of those total sales. If you want to make any changes to this graph, you know, in changing the, the appearance of it, all we need to do is go, again, having selected the graph itself, is if you navigate to the right-hand side, you can see at the moment where we've got our fields, we have this option selected here for fields. If we go into the next one, so the little paintbrush or the paint roller, you can see we've now got the flexibility to make some updates. So let's just go and add some data labels. So to all do that, all we need to do is select this toggle button. So go on to on, and you can see that our values have now been added to that graph for us. We can then select our drop down, and this is where we can now change the unit. So we can change if we want it to be in millions, thousands, or none, or leave it on auto, what I tend to do. And we can also change the color for obviously the, um, what the values are showing. So if you wanted to have it maybe in a purple color, then you can see it's purple. Or if you wanted to have it in white, you can have it in white. Obviously it's not really gonna show up on the graph, but the color I think mostly used would probably be gray like that. Um, so like so. And then we can obviously, you can play around with different text sizes and anything else that you wish to play with from there. So that's the color. And then let's go and compare that. And let's say you now want to change titles, so you can see we've got the title option available to us, so we've got total sales by city. If you didn't want to have a title, toggle button to remove that, or you can obviously just change in here the text that you wish to show if that doesn't show you the correct words that you're looking for. And you can obviously go through and play around with all these different options uh, to get the chart to suit how you prefer. Uh, and the benefit again with charts is if we want, we can obviously move them around and obviously everything is dynamic so we'll option, uh, move around in the format as required but let's say we again wanted to look at just Brighton so when we're in this table we just click Brighton and it fills, filters our other table for us likewise with our charts if we just want to select Brighton from our chart all you need to do is select the relevant column and everything else will be filtered and it goes both ways so again if you wanted to select uh, Brighton from a table or from a chart everything else on your page will be filtered to match that selection. And again, if we go into, I don't know if I've got any options like this, but let's select the name, let's say Amber. Okay, so the only one we see is Manchester. But again, the reverse of that is if we select a name, so the most lowest level in our current data, you can, you can see it will update our chart so we can see exactly where that sales from Amber came from. At the moment, all 4,000 of her sales are literally just in Manchester. But if she had appeared multiple times and she had other sales in other cities, then again, this chart would be a great way or the table to display where all those sales were. One last thing when it comes to charts, let's say we've suddenly changed our mind and we no longer want to have this stat bar chart and we wanted to instead have a, a stat bar or bar chart rather than column chart, sorry. All we need to do, having selected the, uh, the chart itself, is then literally navigate to our visualizations, select another chart, and you can see it's updated for us and it's maintained the ascending order filtering or sorting that we've put on here as well. So hopefully by the end of this video, again, you've got more understanding of how to bring data into Power BI and being able to start playing around with the different graphs and the tables available to us. So as we step forward in the series, we'll be getting gradually a bit more technical with the ability or the information that we have available to us and obviously displaying that in Power BI. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give the video a like and also if it's your first video or if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that bell notification button. That way you'll be notified of all of our future videos. And if you've had any questions at all, please drop me a comment below this video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.